Good afternoon, everyone. Australian government's Melbourne regional office manipulating temperatures to show an almost one degree Celsius increase. National climate assessment stating as fact that ice cover in the Great Lakes will almost go down to zero over the next couple of years. Their chart stopped 2013. This is the updated two years they're missing. Great increases. The same report says that ice will go down to zero in the Arctic, yet it's increasing. NOAA's back at it, showing a cooling trend so they could show a greater upward warming trend. The Greenland ice sheet, less melting, more increase in ice this year. As we move forward over the next couple of weeks, please keep in mind the carbon market. It's a carbon trading floor. They're trading carbon credits. This is a non-physical entity that will limit economic growth within quite a few countries around the planet and may in the end turn off your electricity. National Climate Assessment. Their website is a 2015 copyrighted up to last month website active as we speak. Claiming as fact, ice cover in the Great Lakes will diminish to almost zero. Their charts stop at 2013. Here's 2014 and 2015. How convenient they left out these gargantuan increases that go right along with the solar minimum forecasts. In the same report, projected Arctic sea ice decline down to zero. But we look at today's Arctic sea ice extent and you can see clearly it's well above any of the levels in 2012 or 11. That is an increase, not a decrease. Arctic sea ice and Greenland go together like peanut butter and jelly. This is the IPCC's trump card. If we look at the blue line on the left where I circled with the yellow, Greenland has gained 150 billion tons of snow and ice, blowing away all previous records. Again, the mean this year far above the 1990 to 2013 mean. If you need visuals, here we go. Where it's dark blue, it's gaining. I see a little sliver of red on the west side over there, but predominantly it's a gain across the board from 100 millimeters up to 500 millimeters. Taking another look, not the actual snow mass gain, but let's look at the ice melt losses. 2014 is below the two years, just barely at the mean 1981 to 2010 average. I would like to see the 2015 numbers, but they're not published yet. I bet this will go at the exact mean or below it. I'd like to thank one of my subscribers for sending me this link to Genova. The Melbourne Regional Office of the Australian Meteorological Institute manipulating data through instrumentation changes. The first line reads, after 160 years of fairly constant maximum temperatures, they suddenly took a step up of 0 0.07 degrees Celsius, coincidentally when they started using automatic gauges. These are the previous temperatures, 1997 to 2013, 1980 to 1996. The difference in the right column is how much upward it pushed the temperatures. Annually, that's 0.98 degree plus or minus a 15th of a degree. But notice in the summer, 1.35 degrees Celsius just by changing instrumentation. This is the raw Melbourne annual maximum data bit closer look in here so you can see exactly how it just magically jumped. Climate policy, economic policy is being driven by these changes in our temperature. What if it's just the instrumentation's flawed that's measuring these temperatures? Or what if they're calibrated up a half a degree to show a warming trend on purpose? This is a comparison of both winter and summer maximum temperatures. A bit closer look in here. You can see exactly where the jump up occurred. It's not a gradual jump, it's an immediate vertical jump. NASA, no different manipulating data. What this time they did was instead of actually erasing anything, they showed a more intense cooling trend from the 1980s 
down to the year 2000 so they could show a greater increase in warming. This is the divergence in temperatures. You can see the disparity of at least half a degree. When we come in talking about warming, the Minoan warm period was far warmer than we are today. The Roman warm period, the medieval warm period, our modern warming is the least warm of any of these periods. Yet when you have these temperature stations during the medieval warm period, cataloging temperatures, anywhere in red, oh, they just forgot that or dismissed it. It wasn't important enough because it would have showed that we're actually cooling now and not warming above previous warm temperatures. So therefore, all the myth of the global CO2 man-made got to destroy our industries goes out the window. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you got something out of it. Please remember to subscribe to my channel, Adapt2030, and I'll keep stories like these coming to you.